Hey everyone. So if you're a mobile developer, it's pretty likely that sooner or later, you're going to need to put together an onboarding experience designed around the UI page control paradigm made popular by Apple a million years ago through UIKit. In this video, I'll run through how to implement your own custom page control UI. I'll be using a set of images from one of my favorite pixel artists and animating the size and color of the paging dots below the image carousel as the user scrolls. Okay, let's get into it. So to start with, I've got our image URLs here and an empty component. And now I'm just going to scaffold out the view hierarchy. We'll have a container view and inside that a wrapper view around a flat list. And we'll pass in our images collection for the data prop. For key extractor, we'll just uh, pass back the index of the current item as a string. And then for the render item prop, we'll just pass back an empty, some empty UI. Awesome. And we're going to do the same thing for a, a second flat list, and that will eventually hold the, uh, the page controls. So essentially we're going to have a flat list on the top and a flat list on the bottom. Cool, so now I think we can start adding some styles. Let's create a style sheet down at the bottom. And let's add some placeholder styles in the view hierarchy. We're gonna have a container style, a top container style for this view here, and then for the corresponding view down below, a bottom container style. And let's write those out individually. So we're going to want our top container to take up two thirds of the view's height. So we'll use flex three for our parent container, flex two for top container, and flex one for bottom container. And we'll just put some debugging background colors here to make sure that the proportions look correct. Cool. That looks pretty good. So now let's fill out the render item prop for our list of scrolling images. We'll have a container view, and inside that we'll put an image. We'll need a URI for the image source, and for that we'll just use the individual URL string passed in from the data prop. And in order to make these images visible, we'll need to add a style that has a width and a height. And we're also gonna to wanna to add a style to the container view, so let's put that here as well. And now we can fill out those styles individually. So for our image, we'll wanna give it a width. And we're actually gonna to wanna to drive these dimensions using the dimensions of the screen itself. So we can grab those up here. So let's give our image a width of the screen width and a height of 300, or let's say 200. So our images are visible now, but as you can see, the scroll direction of our flat list is vertical. So let's make it horizontal, and while we're at it, let's also just hide the horizontal scrolling indicator, just so we can keep the UI clean. Now let's center our image container vertically and horizontally. and let's add some spacing between our individual images here. Ah, not quite. We need to tell our image container how wide to be. And we want it to be as wide as the, uh, the screen itself. Cool. Let's give our images a little more padding. Let's give them a height of 300 and a border radius of 40. Awesome. And one last thing, we don't want our flat list to scroll smoothly from beginning to end. We want it to snap to individual pages. So what we can do here is add the paging enabled prop to our flat list. Awesome. That feels perfect. So now we can move on to our second flat list on the bottom, where we'll display our paging dots. Let's start by creating a new component called paging dot. And for now, it'll just be a view with some styles that we'll add shortly. We'll 
we'll just head down to our style sheet and create some empty styles here. And now we can fill out our render item prop. We'll just add our paging dot component right here. And heading back down to our style sheet, we'll give it some dimensions, a width and a height, and a background color. Cool. So now we can see that our paging dots are displaying. So in order to position our paging dots, let's give our bottom container a width of the screen width. Let's justify content center. And let's align item center as well. Now let's make our dots circular by giving them a border radius of seven. Let's give them a border width of two and make the border color black. And finally here, let's set the scroll direction to horizontal. Awesome. Now I want to reduce the vertical space between our images and our paging dots. So let's justify content flex start with our bottom container and uh, justify content flex end with our image container here. Now let's just add a little bit of padding. Awesome, this is looking pretty good. Now our dots are pretty close together, so let's encapsulate them in a container view and add some styles to give them some width and maybe a little padding. Okay, that's good enough for now. And now we can get started on our animation. Let's create a new animated value at the top of the component, and we'll pull in use ref so that we can maintain a single reference to this value across render cycles. Now we'll convert our flat list to an animated flat list and we'll update our animated value in our flat lists on scroll prop. So here what we're saying is that as the horizontal value of our content offset changes, we'll update the animated value accordingly. Importantly, we're going to set use native driver to false here. The native driver can be used to animate things like scale, transform, etc. But in addition to animating the dot scale, we're going to animate its color, which means that we'll have to use the JS driver. And so for that reason, we're going to set use native driver to false here. And now in our render item prop, we can specify a single input range and two output ranges, one for the scale and one for the color. So we'll write in index minus one times width, index times width, and index plus one times width. The input range will take in the scroll position of the user's horizontal scrolling movement. And now let's start with our scale output range. And we'll just map our input values to one, two, and one. Because we want the dot for the currently visible index to be double the ordinary scale, and we want everything else to just be at scale one. We'll want to interpolate that value so that we can pass it into our dot component. And in our dot component, we'll add a prop that takes in the interpolated value and we'll pass it into what will now be an animated view. And finally, we'll pass the scale value into a transform style prop on the animated view. And let's head back up to render item and pass in our dot scale. This is getting there, but you'll notice that any dots that are further than one index away from the currently visible index are set to scale zero. We can fix this by extrapolating the extremes of our output range, which are in our case one, for the full possible range of inputs. To do this, we just write extrapolate clamp. Awesome, this is really starting to come together. The last thing we need to do is animate color. 
also, we'll add a color prop to our paging dot and we'll pass it in as the background color for our style prop. And going back up to render item, we'll create an output range to map our input range to individual colors. And just like we did for dot scale, we'll create a new interpolated value for color scale and pass it into our paging dot component. And that's it, great. So as you can see, both the color and scale of individual paging dots are changing based on our horizontal scroll position. This looks great. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you in another video soon.